Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. <laughs> I appreciate that you remembered. You ready? Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. How does it work every time? Yeah. Humans. Uh, pardon me for the way I'm sitting. It's real casual. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, second from last class of camp. How's everybody feel? <laughs> a lot of things, right? Is anybody sad that it's going to be over? <laughs> that was the majority, I think. Uh, we always get that post-camp blues. But while we're still here, while we're still in camp, while we still have a lot of fun to be had, let's take that moment of gratefulness. Take that big, deep breath in. Let it out and think about whatever you're grateful for. All right, let's get started. The one thing that you want to take from this class, be precise in everything that you do in jiu-jitsu. Uh, especially when strangling people. Uh, who here is a professional athlete in Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Um, nobody. Everybody's got work to go to, right? Everybody's got uh, family or friends or whatever the case may be. So why do we try to literally kill them by ripping their heads off? I don't, I don't understand it. Like, I don't care if you win. I just, if you have me and you have me good, tap, great. If you don't, then why are you trying to compensate? Right? And that's what we're getting. The one thing is, understand what you're doing in all these strings. So, uh, let's see here. Everybody feel their own neck. We're going to start at that kind of the back and the side. And we see how hard it is here, right? And then we're just going to go forward, 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 forward. And then we're going to find a soft spot. Everybody found that, I hope? <laughs> Once you find that soft spot, there's one on the opposite side. Those are the two arteries that we're attacking in every strangle that we do today. If there is not pressure on that hose, where's Preet when you need him, right? And can anybody whistle? Yeah, perfect. It's a good way of handling it. Thank you, Preet. Uh, no, no, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> Everything that we do, if it's up here and you're putting pressure up here, that means it's cranking their neck. It's hurting their neck. It's not putting them out. We need it to be here, okay? This is gonna be more of an advanced class. I'm gonna go through moves more than principles and there's gonna be a bunch of different details. But really simply, it's just making sure that the two hoses that supplies your blood, I'm simplifying it of course, but supplies your brain with blood, we're kinking or putting or bending or making sure that they're shut off, okay? So, the first thing, or the first one we're going to do, and there's a goal going to be from bottom. Uh, it rotates you over 45 degrees. All right. So this one, we're going to start out in bottom half. Almost certainly, the top player is going to want to at least control the underhook. Okay, if you guys have taken pre classes, that underhook uh, is important. So we're going to say, oh, okay, I'm cool with that. And we're going to attack this secondary lapel. So overhook, come through, and get your grip. Okay, everybody's probably seen this or been here. The details on this, this overhook, as we come through and get our grip, I want my elbow to immediately fill. What does it want to do? Where is he? Come back home. Oh, there you are. Right? I don't want to flare this. If I flare this, there's a ton of room for her to get her arm off. Right? So I want to grab. If I can, I'll pull down. Grab, elbow back home, okay? Possibly bringing my ribs back to my elbow as well, okay? Now, look at the angle here. If I tried to come across and strangle her like this, if you look real close, the gi is coming straight down, meaning it's gonna hit that side of my neck. Almost always, we want this gi to come in at a 45 degree angle. So not straight down, whereas if I pull, it's going to hit here, it needs to come down, and this way. Everybody understand what I'm saying? 
This is going to make a huge difference. Overhook, grab, elbow back home. Okay. Now I'm going to use my wrist to figure out that angle. You see, I'm not just pulling this straight down and over. I'm figuring it out with my wrist at a 45 degree angle to her neck. Everybody see that? Talk with your partners when you're with them to make sure that you're getting that coverage. Okay, well, does this feel right? Eh, no, I still don't. You'll know. Everything's nice and tight here. Now, I don't just go for a normal X choke here, and here's why. If I would grab the fabric here and I start pushing, where is it hitting on the neck? I can feel my wrist in contact with her neck, but the hard part of her neck. I want to find that soft artery. So what's the best way for me to find it? Well, I have nice control here. I'm just going to place my hand directly on the artery. It's the palm of my hand. Directly on the artery, and I'm going to fold my hand on top of the back of her neck. Okay. Once I have that artery, it doesn't take a lot. So open hand, no grip. Close like this over the artery. Okay. Once this is in, this is in contact at a 45 degree angle, this is definitely in contact because I can physically see it. I'm going to just crimp, elbow comes back home, and then just start to push a little bit away. That's it. Does um, this side do the inside? Well, that's my pressure. That's where the precision comes in. You have to talk with your partner. I've done this for a long time, so I know the angle. I can feel the angle, but talk with your partner. Okay? Come across. It's got to be at that 45. If it's down here and you're just pulling, it's not good enough. Okay? It's got to be coming across, come through, find that artery, go like this, nice and gently. Elbow still back home, and then just slightly, if you need to, take this hand and start pushing into that strangle, if you need to. Okay, let's, before you have all these questions, let's try it. Sound good? All right, one, two, three. I saw a few things, but who has some burning questions? Yes. Uh, it depends. It depends where their neck is and where that gi lapel is in relation to said neck. Sometimes I need to, you know, wiggle it a little bit. Um, so the answer is yes, but we have to think instead of just, oh, I got this. I'm gonna, bah! right? We have to think about where we're placing our hands and think about how we're cutting off the blood to the brain. Yes. The second arm, are you like going from up to down or are you first feeling like you're the palm and then pushing? I'm trying to find that artery with my palm. So I'd be mm -hmm. in here just like that. Yep. The trick that I saw, yeah, Vincent. So I think the person who showed this, I find sometimes my arms are sure comfortable. Quite a bit of weird. Yes. Quite a few about the side Sure, it's real quick. It, it, real quick, I can show you just. Uh, so let's say this person is really wide and I was only able to get this. <laughs> Makes funny faces as well. And I was only able to get this. Like most of the time, you could even get down here, right? Then I'll kind of play around here for a second. So I'll start like moving, and then I grab, and then I start coming up, and then maybe I'll pull them up a little bit. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, the answer is sometimes it's a little bit harder to get into depending on the body type. One thing that I do want to really stress is how important this arm is. If you're here and everything's perfect and this arm is flared, go ahead and get out. It's quite easy. And that, this, this simple, go ahead and get out. That's it, right? I'm not strong. I'm just attaching myself to myself and she would have to be you know, jacked, mm -hmm. super jacked, mm -hmm. right? Does this make sense to everybody? Awesome. All right. 
So I'm going to try to cover a bunch of stuff today. This is a, a uh, if you have questions, please ask them, but I'm going to move on to a completely different strangle. Mm -hmm. Same idea that we're trying to be precise in how we do it, but they do get complicated. I think this is an advanced or at least intermediate, right? I don't know what I put on it, but mm -hmm. it's one of them. So we're going to, we're going to move on. Everybody seemed to do really well. So nice job. Now we're going to play with some lapels. Okay. How do you get the lapel out? That's totally up to you. You know, Megan will take her feet and get them out, right? I'm sure Alex probably puts it in his mouth and goes like this. Right? <laughs> Me personally, I try to get them out whenever I can, meaning like two minutes beforehand in our room, right? Like I, I don't know what I'm going to need it for, but eh, maybe I'll need it later, right? So first we'll say this near side lapel. When I say near side, it's the one closest to me, right, in relation to me, okay? So this is the one that I'm going to work on. It happens to be out. So again, we're kind of playing this underhook battle. I'm like, oh, I found that. I'm just coming up and grabbing, opposite hand, okay? Just as a point of control, this is a problem for her, right? Not the end of the world, but a problem, okay? So if I wanted to, even if she had an underhook, if I wanted to, this is a nice sense of point of control. Again, if my elbow is back home. If my elbow's out here, she can you know, swing her head through or whatever, okay? In general, and my students have heard me say this a fucking million times, offensive, your arms could be away from your body. Defensive or neutral, bring them back. You're only offensive in split seconds, right? Offensive, back home. Make sense? Same thing. Offensive, back home. Okay, once we're here, I'm trying to get actually deeper, okay? I have this grip, she's trying to figure out what the hell to do. I want her to have that underhook in this scenario, okay? So I'm gonna end up going for using this as a baseball bat uh, strangle, but hopefully we set it up in a way that is a little bit different, right? So again, I have this grip, I'm making her move, she's like, what the hell, how do I get out of here? I'm taking my leg, planting it, let's me rotate here, planting it to the ground, raising my hips, and I'm going to try to hip switch to get to that opposite side hip. Everybody understand that? I saw some questioned faces. Let me show that one more time. So I'm in half guard, planting, raise, and trying to get to that other side hip. I was in this example, on my right hip, and I'm trying to get to my left, okay? Have this nice grip. P.S. Have contact with the neck. If it's all the way out here, it's not really going to help you, okay? Try to, as you bring that elbow in, keep that contact with the neck, okay? Plant, hip up, hip switch. This is when I'm getting my grip. Already have contact here. Now I have my grip. Now I'm going to continue to roll. Okay? Now, the precision here is really important to me. Painless, precise, and playful. If I'm here and I get this grip and I'm pinching my forearms here, it's just going to hurt. I don't want to hurt her. She's my friend. She's my training partner. She's the reason that I can get better at jiu-jitsu. Right? So I need wherever it happens to be, whether it be my wrist or the top side of my forearm, I need that to come at a 45 degree angle here. If you don't have this, don't force it. Where's that one top? So this one's coming through at that 45 degree angle, then this one has to figure out what it's doing. Okay? So this one, I'm just trying to figure out, okay, how do I get to that space? Okay, again, don't get overexcited, don't just squeeze. 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle. Keep rolling. One more time, we're playing around again. Half an hour ago I got these out. Whatever, doesn't matter. Pass, grab. Hang out here, control. This is good control, right? Whenever you want to go, maybe you plant. We're doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Hips up, rotate through. Get your grip. Now most importantly, forearm at that 45. The second one, make sure you get that 45. And then 
Finish. Right. It wouldn't. So the principle of it, it wouldn't. Mine in that scenario is I'm grabbing like this. And you'll find it to be the most comfortable. Okay, again, let's, let's try it and see if we still have questions. Let's talk with our partners as we do it. One, two, three. Right, stay where you're at real quick. As per usual, if one person has a question and everybody else gets it, they're the idiot. If everybody has a question, then I'm the idiot. Again, as in every class, I'm the idiot. Okay, we're going to try it so everybody can see from here. Everybody's kind of getting this, right? Everybody sees that artery, right? It's the second hand that's kind of bothering people, okay? A lot of people say, bring your elbows together, which gives you a generality. It's kind of like pitching your knees in an arm bar. You don't, you don't have to. You have to control the shoulder, and that helps you control the shoulder. This is kind of the same type of thing, okay? Uh, let's see if I can make this so you can see it. Watch my arm. You see how that's going to come out of 45. You see how that hits the artery? So like, what am I doing with that secondary arm? I'm also figuring out how to get to that. She has a really small neck. So if you look at my elbows, my elbows are here. They're actually this way, yeah. right? Because I have to get into that space. So 45, 45. The angle of my wrist changed. All this stuff does change in space. Necks are different. Sometimes if it's a big neck, it'll be right here. But I have to change, really change the angle, right? And then if I have to squeeze it all, I don't have it precisely, okay? I mean, right here. Yep. <laughs> Nothing, okay? Unless you're Alfonso, really. <laughs> yes. Are you getting the grip first and then finding the angle, or are you putting your hand in place to find the angle? I'll probably get the grip first, but right. every once in a while I get crazy. Okay, let's do it with our partners real quick and then we're gonna to get to the next one, okay? One, two, three. All right, we're getting a little weirder here, okay? We're trying to get through four different things. That's 15 minutes a thing. Uh, it's just, it's a lot. And there's a lot of details here, but it's fun. Okay. <laughs> this is, uh, let's rotate just a little bit so we can face the camera. Yeah. This one's super duper fun. We're going to use uh, the outside lapel this time, okay? How we get it up there is the fun trick, okay? Again, I normally just control and then play, meaning I don't really know what's going to happen yet. But I have this little guy, and uh, I'm going to use it at some point. Mm -hmm. Not really sure when, but I'm going to use it. Okay. So maybe I'm playing here. And I'm passing. You see what I'm? It's just you know, so far, not nothing that's going to you know really cause any red flags, right? So I'm passing. So now it's almost near side. If you see it up here, again, now I'm kind of playing. She thinks I got the underhook. It's wonderful, right? Okay. Now I switched it back again. Okay, this is bad news bears for her, okay? So if we look at what's happening here, this lapel, if done correctly, hits that 45 degree angle, okay? Once I get it here, now I have control and she has half the blood going to her brain, which is a problem. Probably not gonna put most people out unless they're in a panic attack or whatever. Uh, but realistically, now I have a, a nice piece of control. There's two ways to finish here. Uh, the first way is kind of just what we just did, okay? Hip up, hip switch, 45 degree angle. We'll take just a little bit so we face the camera. What I prefer to talk about is the next switch, okay? So this to me is just a little bit easier Again, this doesn't, it, it doesn't like, when you're going with a live opponent, it's not like they're just gonna let you do this, but you make them think about other stuff. Right, now she's probably gonna know that she's in trouble, but maybe you start working here, maybe you start playing legs, maybe you start to lift for a butterfly, maybe you start to do a lot of different stuff, right? And in that scramble, 
you get this, okay? On almost all gi strangles, I'm using my wrist to find that artery. So like little fingers, like I can feel the mat, the outside of my wrist, I'm looking for that artery. I'm trying to feel that soft spot and then just add a little bit extra via my wrist. So, you know, some of us know rev the engine or, or you know, roll the wrist and the x choke. That's what I'm referring to, but I'm just giving you a reason to do it. So as I'm in here, you can see, uh, let's rotate just a little bit towards the camera. Look at the bend in my wrist, okay? It's almost mirroring her neck. And okay, you, it's gonna be really tough to see, but I, this little incremental, okay, I'm feeling up here currently, that's hard, hard, soft. Mm -hmm. Does everybody get what I'm saying? This is super nuanced, but this is how I like to strangle people. This is how it's really effective. Like, how does this feel currently? Yeah. <laughs> And that's nothing. I mean, that's, it's really nothing. It's like taking a McDonald's straw and just going like that. Okay? Yeah, McDonald's here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, matching that neck and then feeling. Okay? Also, I'm probably going to try to break down our posture. So, I'm just going to bring it back or bring it back, whatever the case may be. But realistically, this is where I'd like you to be. So this, hit that 45 one way. You can see that. Match the neck and then feel it with the wrist. And then just wait. See? <laughs> She's not going to be too happy with me. Josh, can you loop choke from there? Uh, yes, but please don't complicate it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so again, we have this lapel out, outside lapel. We're passing it however we decide we can pass it. Coming through, passing, passing again. Seems complicated, it actually happens quite a bit if you like to play. I'm not saying you do it just like that. Play, have fun. Keep that lapel and see what happens, okay? But in this case, we got here and then we just finished with that wrist roll. Let's try it, one, two, three. So some of the common problems that I saw in that, and uh, what, what was your name again, sir? Yannis. Yannis. Uh, so just so, look at the gi top he's wearing in relation to the size of him. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so that, that's definitely gonna be a problem. And this may not be the thing to do uh, on, on Yannis, right? Uh, but as we're playing with lapels, you can also be precise with that. So. Yeah. So, I may not be taking this and just trying to go like this, right? Like, that's not going to make it, that's not going to elongate it a lot, right? Let's go, okay, so everybody can see, so you're facing directly at the camera. So if I just go like this, I'm, I'm never going to get that, right? So I, if I come out and maybe even up, well that elongated it quite a bit, where now I have See how many times we can get this bitch around. All right? Just vulgarity for no reason. Damn it, man. So think about that when you're playing with the lapels as well, is how, how you elongate it. If you just, you know, okay, how do I make this song? Oh, oh, okay, that seems to work. Okay. Uh, the second was the wrist roll on it. Uh, you need that connection. And sometimes what I found actually isn't the wrist for me, it's the other side because maybe there's just like a little air gap, right? Like, ah, it's just kind of pulling on the back of the neck and it kind of hurts. Like, that's where I kind of lose this one, okay? But either way, you want that contact and just figure out how to get that precision, okay? So we all understand what we're trying to do. The blood delivers oxygen to the brain. Right? We're trying to stop that. We have varying levels of need of oxygen in the brain. If I'm meditating and my heart rate is, you know, 40 beats per minute and I'm just in a Zen state, I can be at peace with that being closed for longer than if I'm having a panic attack. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, because my heart rate was 200 beats per minute. And it, the requirements were so different, right? 
So understand that where we're at, like sometimes people are tap. Sometimes it's like, right? Okay. Last but not least, we're moving on to, it's another strangle, um, but like I said, uh, advance. So uh, as a lot of you know, I, I prefer guillotines. Um, that is my, or anything front headlock, that's my, my fun uh, place. So we're gonna use this gi to get into a guillotine, a gooseneck or a chin strap guillotine, okay? So most of us know like loop chokes, right? If not, there it is, have fun. <laughs> but a loop choke, again, I'm coming down at that 45, I gotta turn down and then up, that's gonna create a V. That's that 45 degree angle. And then I'm putting an arm or something there to compress down. Compression, not extension. In this case, again, I'm in half guard. I'm probably going to play this overhook and grab in here, okay? Playing. I don't just go for things right away. Like, I don't want to force things. I'm, uh, what am I, 70, some, 72, three kilos, 165 pounds. You should know the both. Is that about right? 74-ish? All right, perfect. 74-ish kilos, so I'm not a big dude, meaning that I can't just force stuff, right? And I, I don't think that's as fun anyway. So, get the grip, play, play, come up for this. Well, to get this, I need to come around and start changing angles, and a lot of times I'll get flattened out, with, and I can get a loop choke too, but I prefer, if anybody is taking a guillotine class, look what hip I'm in. I'm on my strangle side hip. My body is already in a great position for an arm and guillotine. This is where I want to be for an arm and guillotine. So I'm using this lapel to loop choke, and then instead of trying to finish the loop choke, which is I have to get on my opposite side hip, I'm then going for a chin strap. Okay, so let's, uh, yeah, exactly that posture. So I'm pulling down, going for it, and then when I get it, I'm not going for the loop. I let go of the gi and grab the chin. Okay. Now, uh, who here is super good at guillotines or really likes guillotines? This <laughs> is perfect. Who here besides my student <laughs> really likes guillotines? Okay. So chin strap guillotines are really difficult to get painlessly. Um, you can absolutely do it, however, it's difficult. Um, and it is what it is. We're still gonna learn it today and you're probably not gonna get this painlessly, but whatever. Underneath the jaw, there's something in there perpendicular to the jaw. My elbow is gonna come back home. This overhook is gonna stay overhook, so I'm gonna add even a more complicated, we're gonna do a gooseneck arm in guillotine, okay? I'm grabbing my own meat of my hand. Both my elbows are gonna come back home and my body is going to compress the head. The whole point of a guillotine, I, I feel like I made that more complicated, is to put something under the jaw, perpendicular to it, and compress down. And most of you are saying, well, no, I'm supposed to go like this and then pull their head off. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely attach it, that hurts. This is more precise to put people out. We're kinking the hose, okay? So that something, unfortunately, is a small hand as opposed to a forearm. Underneath, go. Oh. All right, now let's put it all together. The same side, I'll probably use the person to come up. She's a small individual and not like ready for it, but especially if I'm, what's that? You ready? All right. So I'm going to pull myself up and threaten, okay? Once I'm there, Chin strap, cover the hand. I'm already on that strangle side hip. Elbows come back home, you can press. Chin strap, elbows come back home. My body compresses. Okay, so we're using this lapel, fake loop, chin strap, arm and guillotine. Uh, again, let's, uh, questions as a walk around, because I'm just running out of time, okay? All right, one, two, three.
Um, the chances of the room getting a painless gooseneck arm in guillotine off of a collard rig is probably not super high. That being said, hopefully we got some ideas that we can do. We don't necessarily need to go with that loop choke. Like in the other ones, we were on the baseball choke, you know, we were on one side hip and we had to get to that other side hip, right? I just showed, well, you don't, there's other options if you're on that hip and you want to stay on it. Same thing with that one. It's just, uh, depending on what hip we're on, kind of dictates what we're going to do. Maybe I do want to get to that hip, and then it'll be a loop choke. That's cool too. Okay. Uh, any quick questions about that? I feel like there is no quick questions because it's all like, well, how do you, it feels like it's cranky. I, I don't understand, you know, the placement of the hand, what's happening with the head. Yes. The show set involved, um, I guess we were talking about this, but wrapping around the head. Mm -hmm. Did you switch out piece of clearance or? Perhaps. Okay. Mm -hmm. Might have been a tool, but maybe. Uh, yeah, 100% could be a tool. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer, but it depends. There's just too much going on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Second from last class, and we have, you know, the myth. The, the legend coming up next, Francesco, which I'm excited to learn your triangles. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, obviously, I think you kind of get, I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunity to come and share my jujitsu knowledge. Nice. <laughs> Uh, to share some jiu-jitsu knowledge, to have great conversations with you over camp, to be in Estonia, to uh, you know meet so many really genuinely cool people. Like you guys are my people. You know what I'm saying? Like we can come to this fucking place, not know anybody, and leave with a couple hundred friends, just because we have this weird obsession with rolling around in pajamas or less than pajamas. It's really cool. Uh, before, I, I wanted to, you know, I, instead of a group picture, the reason that I suggested that we bring our phones, and we don't have to do this, uh, but I thought it would be cool if we all took a picture of the person that we trained with or a selfie of this class, and if you post on social media or whatever, just be like, I was grateful for it this day at this time, or keep it in your, uh, your photos and say, you know, oh yeah, I remember that. That's when I was really happy for that particular moment. So, you know, as the time runs out and, and you guys get Francesco, maybe think about that. Maybe think about just, you know, taking a picture to remind yourself of that moment, post it for somebody else, maybe they can become grateful, and just try to create a, a gratefulness wave uh, that impacts everybody. Cool. Well, thank you guys.